to our first law. Matthew 24, 10 to 12, say, many have been offended, and the love of many have was cool because of persecution, because of insincerity of man, and all that, because of so much wickedness in the world. Some people ha has, have become so cold towards the Lord. It ought not to be. Let there be a restoration. Let there be a revival in the name of Jesus. As individuals, we need to wake up to our primary assignment to be Jesus ambassadors, reconciling men back to God. Please don't forget that. Even if you forget any other thing I've said today, you are Jesus ambassador. Not just for the world that say, uh, you know, there's uh, a church called Christ Embassy. Christ Embassy and all that. It has that connotation. And it's from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. Jesus Christ has made us to be ambassadors, his own ambassadors. So we, God, was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's our duty. Our children of God, what? now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Not just for the title, oh, I'm ambassador. So let them give me some ambassadorial robe. Not that. In spirit, be an ambassador indeed. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray, pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. God has made us his own ambassadors. Amen? You and I. Forget about title. If you gave your life sincerely to Christ last week, you're already God's ambassador, and it's expected that the light of God will continue to shine, even though you have not understood the whole Bible. But the little light that you have, let it shine. Let my own shine. And then collectively, we shine like that. We, we, we take over the world again. We turn the world upside down again. Amen. We can participate in missions as individuals. When you talk about missions, Missions involve sending people to places where the gospel had never been preached. Not just a walk, walkover kind of thing. They had never heard about God. The interior of interiors sent people there. And some people have responded to that call. They are called missionaries. They go to such places and preach the good news. Maybe you know some missionaries. Not long ago, we were talking about missionaries, you know, in the, in the clubhouse. That, oh, what an awesome responsibility. What an awesome job. You see, we hardly talk about missionary. We talk about evangelists. We know there's so much. We talk about prophets. We talk about apostles. We talk about pastors. And, you know, talk about evangelists, teachers. But missionaries, we hardly recognize them. But they are doing a great job, just like Apostle Paul did, preaching the good news to the people that had never received the gospel. So there are three ways you can participate as a missionary. You can be the one to go to preach the good news. Places where the gospel has never been preached. The right to face persecution and opposition. Yeah. Secondly, you can be a sponsoring missionary. You are not there. We will send people with your money. Your money. Send people there. Encourage them. You do a good job. And then, of course, the third group, those who pray for them. Pray for missionaries. We should always pray for them because they face a lot of dangers, a lot of opposition. Praise the Lord. The Lord help them in Jesus' name. Let us, like Apostle Paul, on his conversion, ask the Lord these things. Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Lord, what will you have me do? So, ask God as individuals, Lord, I've heard today that it's not just sitting down, just relaxing, say I'm a Christian, if I die, I go to heaven. It's beyond that. Lord, what will you have me do in this great commission of occupying till you come? Acts chapter 9, verse 6. So you pray that prayer. 
Because immediately Apostle Paul was converted, he was the one who on his own prayed to God, Lord, what will you have me do? And God said, okay, go to Ananias. He will tell you what you're going to do. And actually he did, and God revealed his plan. That was to be a messenger to the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. Every one of us, we need to ask this. In this great work, we can't do everything. Lord, what will you want me to do as an ambassador for Christ? Let not your past failures deter you. Let us arise and shine, for our light has come. We know everything is winding up, and Jesus' coming is so near now, so imminent. The import of this is that, look, my father must not die and go to hell. My mother must not die and go to hell. Because after death, no reconciliation. There's, it's appointed to man once to die after that judgment. So after somebody has died, there is no possibility that person will be saved again. It's as important as that. Though there are some false teachers who say there's a place called purgatory, that is not biblical. There is no such a place. If we need to repent, it is now or never. Neither because you wear an amulet. That's what is called an amulet in some religious setting, Christian, pagan, Christian religious setting. They have what is called amulet. Amulet. Small thing, they tie it on their neck. And if you open inside, they say if you, if you, if you die wearing this amulet, you will go to heaven. Falsehood. False hope. There's nothing like that. Now is the accepted time. Now you see that when somebody has died, say, may he say rest in peace. Why do Christians pray that prayer? If you're a New Testament believer and you actually believe that it's happened to my want to die after that judgment, why do you pray that prayer? You think your prayer can avail if somebody has died in sin and is dead for hell to make that person come back to God and go to heaven? Impossible. I don't pray that prayer. No, preacher, may so rest in may her soul rest in peace. That's just a wish, not real prayer, actually. It's commonplace and it surprises me. Committed Christian pray that may he so rest in peace. Just to conform with the way. If you can't be there, join them. Be a radical for Jesus. And tell them the plain truth that look, now is the time. After somebody has died, sorry. So this is the time to labor for our family members who are not yet saved. This is the time for, for them to enter the ark of salvation. Now, now, now. Let us not dwell on the past. Let us return to our God. And let us deploy our talents, our giftings, our blessings towards the heartbeat of God. Heartbeat. Is the soul winning? Heartbeat of God is so winning, so winning, so winning, winning souls. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus says, You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, talking to you and me. Please, don't push this responsibility to apostles, pastors, and evangelists alone. Please, because there's no basis for that in the scriptures. This commission is to every believer, wherever you are. You shine your corner, I shine in my corner. I may not be as impactful as an apostle because there are different gifts and different levels of grace. I may not be as impactful as an evangelist or a missionary, but in my own little corner, I should shine. You should shine. Amen? Therefore, deploy your talents, deploy, deploy your giftings, deploy all the blessings you have received towards the heartbeat of God, both by our own lifestyle and by preaching. Don't just say my lifestyle is good enough. Just live a good, godly life, and people will see that you are with Jesus. Very good. The apostles did that, but they went beyond. Verbally express that Jesus is Lord, Tell others about how he saved you and how you can also save them. 
Just witnessing. You don't have to know the whole Bible. In our schools, in our workplace, in our community, in our families, and everywhere, let us tell others about Jesus. Jerusalem is the first place we should start. You know? And that's our fabulous. I'm very concerned when somebody dies. My first question is, did that person know God? So I even know whether to cry with you or to say, relax, Jesus is in control. Right now, your relations, your brother that you lost so much, your sister that you lost so much, are they in Christ? It's your responsibility to tell them about Jesus if they don't yet know Jesus. If you are harsh, wicked, unforgiving toward them, can they hear the gospel through you? No. Therefore, there must be a change of attitude as well. If that's the problem you have, you have, and that's why you have not ministered to your relations, please, let there be a change of heart in Jesus' name. Jesus came to seek and to save them that are lost. Luke 19, verse 10. That's the purpose. If you were to summarize the purpose, oh, why did Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come into this world? Promptly put, he came to seek and to save them that was lost. That's the reason why Jesus Christ went from village to village, from city to city. He never sat in one place. People must hear the gospel. And it's not only Jesus that did this. He gave us this command, and the apostles, disciples, the early church, they obeyed to the letter. And that is why we had all those results that we read about. Let us have the same spirit that the early disciples had. Let us have the same spirit and passion that Jesus also had. Let us not forget we, are individual, we as individuals have been made ministers of reconciliation. Are you a minister? Yes, you are. You could be a music minister, but at the same time, you are a minister of reconciliation. You could be a pastor. At the same time, you are a minister of reconciliation. You can be an evangelist prophet, yet you are a minister of reconciliation. Just know that. So you have your portfolio. You always to reconcile men and women back to God. It's not by power, it's not by mind. You say the word, you tell them about Jesus' love, how he died for them, and if they believe, you know, they too can receive forgiveness of sins like you did. Simple. Holy Spirit is the one that converts. He's the one that convicts and converts. Yours is to proclaim the word. Amen. Yes. I don't want you to be discouraged. Even some of us who have been winning souls, and sometimes we ask ourselves, where are my fruits now? Like yesterday, we went out. We want souls quite all right. But where are they here now in this gathering? That shouldn't bother you. Amen? I want to encourage you. If that the discouragement that you have, don't be discouraged anymore. The reason is that God has given this commission to the church in general and to us specifically, but we are to work at the body of Christ. That is why Paul, uh, Paul said, I, Paul planted, Apollos watered, God gives the increase. Those people you have spoken to, you have invested the word of God in them, they can become apostles tomorrow without your knowing. And you don't even need to know here, but over there, you are going to be rewarded. Amen? Yes. May the Lord help us to really occupy till he comes in the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me, or you are right here, you have not known Jesus? The very first thing is to know Jesus before you talk about responsibilities, before you talk about service to God. First of all, know him in a personal way. Have a personal relationship with Jesus, and you can only do that by acknowledging that you are a sinner. You may be a philanthropist doing good things for the poor and all that, that notwithstanding, Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is therefore need for man to repent. Come out of religiosity. I'm a religious man. I do this. No religious man will go to heaven. Only born again Christian will make heaven. Just know that. 
you are religious and you're not born again, now, now you can be reconciled to God. Acknowledge you are a sinner, irrespective of whatever you have done or still doing. Say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. Forgive my sin. Wash away my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe you were buried for me. And I believe you rose again for me. I believe you are coming back again for me. Say that prayer sincerely and mean it. And that's the beginning of the Christian race. For us who are already believers, for ages, we have left the responsibility of soul winning to ministers of the gospel, to apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists and missionaries. That's a great error. At least from the word of God we have seen. These, these uh, being called ministers of reconciliation, you are not exempted. Nobody is exempted. Even little ones, they can evangelize their fellow little ones. Tell others about Jesus. Leave the, let the Holy Spirit take over and complete the process. Amen? Yes, and before we round up, the same gospel that says is the one that heals. If there's anyone that is hurting, just raise up your hand. I'm going to pray. I know there are some watching and some listening to me online, on the internet. You can do the same. There is no distance with God. The Bible says he sent his word and healed them. All you need is faith. There was a woman who had issue of blood, hemorrhage, for so long. She had been impoverished. She had seen so many physicians. No cure. But she knew that Jesus was coming. She said, oh, today I'm going to be healed. Today I am going to be healed. Whether anybody likes it or not, by fire, by thunder, I will be healed today. You know what she did? She was desperate. And she went, said, look, if I follow due protocol, I can't see this man Jesus. Therefore, she broke protocol and went through the crowd and saw Jesus and tore the hem of his garment. And that was the beginning of her miracle. By faith, you can stretch out your hand to tear the hem of Jesus' garment right now. He's compassionate. The same sacrifice he made on the cross was to save you from sin and also sickness and disease. Whatever the doctor says, he says you have a terminal sickness and they have given up on you. That is man talking. Man is very limited. God who created you and who also has purpose and who can send his angels to do an operation on you and you are healed, he says you are healed. By his stripes you were healed. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. By his stripes we were healed. Claim it by faith. Walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you, Lord, because you have spoken to us again to remind us of a great and awesome responsibility of being your witnesses, of being light to the world. King of glory, we thank you. The world has come forth. We ask so, Lord, that this world will fall on fetter ground indeed and bring forth increase, that the kingdom of God will increase. That is your intent. When you sent us forth, that we should go and preach the gospel to all the nations of the earth. Lord, Father, I cannot do what my big brothers are doing. Lord, having so many conversions, so many souls giving their life to Christ at once, but in my own little way, Lord, in, my, in our own little way, help us. Teach us to know what to do and how to participate in this end time harvest. Even as your coming is, hope, is coming, that Lord will not go before you empty handed. We go with you and say, Lord, these are the souls. Even the ones we do not know. I remember in those days, used to preach in the, in, in the Bosix when we were traveling. And souls would give their life to Christ. I've never seen those. I've never heard of them. But God knows about it. There's a reward for each and every one of us when we labor in the gospel. Romans, I mean, Revelation 22 verse 12 says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Whatever you are doing for the Lord now, there is a great reward. Please do not relent. If you have not been winning so before, arise and shine, for your light has come. 
If you have been discouraged because of circumstances and things of this world, let's go back to our maker and say, Lord, we are sorry. We missed it. Restore us unto the joy of our salvation. Thank you, Father, as you do all this for us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Praise the Lord. Shall we stand as we give unto the Lord? Amen. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, sing how great. Yeah. 
Anybody ready with announcement? Announcement. But before then, let's pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offering and tithe that we have given in obedience to your word. Father, we have given and we ask that you bless it and use it for the kingdom expansion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let our experience increase, O oh Lord, because your words say. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over, so it shall make give to your bosom. Lord, let us find favor today and this week and in future inside of men and women. Send out destiny helpers that will propel us to fulfill our destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, Father, by virtue of our giving, sickness, disease have gone. Prosperity takes over in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for answering these prayers. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. Praise. Please be seated. Um, good morning, everyone. Just a quick, just a couple of quick announcements. The women's meeting uh, will be Women of Honor. What, what's the name? Women of Honor meeting will be uh, second Sunday of November. I think that will be the 13th. Uh, is that the 13th? Okay. So that will be the 13th. That will be two Sundays from today. That will be after service. So we are asking that the men uh, who have uh, wives in the women's group, please plan accordingly. You know, so that they can have their time, you know, to uh, have their event. It will be after service. You know, I know I've already told my wife on that day. We normally drive to, to war, uh, church together. Maybe we'll come separate. I don't know. You know, our house is not too far. If your house is far, you know, make some plans. You know, if you can't hang around for, I don't know if it's going to be a couple of hours or whatever, how long it takes their service. Just make plans so that they can have their, their meeting. It's been a long time coming. So let's support that the best that we can. Uh, we're still asking people to bring uh, winter items for, you know, the, uh, for our outreach ministries, winter items, uh, warm clothing, and things like that. You know? And if you have other non-perishable items, we take that at any time. 
you know, so uh, please do bring, if you bring, start bringing them, you know, think of that during the week. Go through uh, stuff that you can uh, give away and just bring them to church with you on Sunday. You know, we're collecting those and we'll, we'll soon be in uh, another outreach to, uh, you know, to the homeless centers to, to help, uh, you know, help them through the, uh, the winter months, you know. So, um, also, um, if there's anybody that is handy, <laughs> you're really handy, you're good at hanging things up, uh, you know, doing things on the wall and things like that, you know, uh, and they need your assistance, you know, somewhere here in the building. Uh, so just see me at after service, you know, we need to put up a couple of things, you know, so if you can do that, uh, that would be uh, appreciated. And, uh, you know, we pray for our brethren you know, who have traveled, uh, you know, we, hopefully they should be coming back soon. You know, we ask that the Lord will be with them and keep them safe in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, I think that's it. So let's stand up. We can close the service now. I think we're done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a, uh, you know, a marvelous, marvelous admonition today, a charge for us to go back and do the first works again. And we pray, Lord, as you begin to inspire our hearts, as you bring this revival in our hearts, that it would cause us to mobilize to evangelize in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we will go into places, in the marketplace, and wherever we go, and cause the light of God to shine through us in Jesus' name. Help us to be effective witnesses for you, ambassadors for Christ. You know, Lord, that through you, through us, you might demonstrate the fullness of the character of God and your position that you want us to have in this world is ministers of righteousness to bring people in reconciliation back to God. Help us, Lord, to do these things in Jesus' name. And let us not be hearers, hearers of the word only, but doers of the same. And as we go this week, let the name of the Lord be blessed in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And may we dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thy kingdom come, O Lord, and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Have a blessed week, everybody. God bless you.